feel like when there was like a I don't know a mock game show of that possibly it's probably Japanese <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can hear it's not loaded up on mine thing because my web page is still loading, but I think I can hear everything going okay on your computer. So that sounds yes. positive. All right, fine. So let me reactivate a Discord window so we can see what you're doing. Window do, do, capture. Do, do, oh, I should yeah. do this in not that mode so that other people on discord can be hidden and safe discord everything sucks there's always one thing that wants to just be super annoying and then I click on this, and then I click on this. Oh, nope, that's the wrong one. <laughs> and I click on this, and yay! Okay, and then I shrink this. Oh, excuse me. And then I shrink this, and I shrink this, and I guess not going to get any wider than that. I'll leave you a little tiny border. And I'll move that, I don't know, here, I guess. And I'll transition. Yay! Oh, you know what? I'll move you up here, because nobody needs to see the assets that I use. Cool. All right. Let's make you a little larger. <sighs> okay, so if that's everything, Jesus. Um, ma, ma, ma. okay. Then let us begin this train wreck of a show. If only my program would record. Okay. Let's close that out. Go away. Set the timer. Let's -a go. All right. And after all that tech numbing mind chaos, whatever. Whoa, that is my phone, <laughs> I think. Um, welcome to some sort of talk show. I am your host, and joining me with me today is Evan. Hi, Evan. <laughs> Hi. We are continuing our road trip through the, um, what's it called? D and D Monster Manual, and there's nothing that drains my brain cells more than having to go through odd, like not just technical difficulties, but audio <laughs> technical difficulties. Um, give me a visual technical difficulty any day. Um, and we're continuing on with the Allosaurus, um, and potentially all Mirage if we have time. So we're in the ALs after the ALIP. Last week, um, a wispy spectral type visage. And today, we're either doing a relatively um, previously existed dinosaur or a combination of rabbit and unicorn, again, if we have time. So what are, what are the ideas that are briefly skimming through our mind as to how we can, how, well, how you can, I already did all this, but how you can approach this, um, creature, this segment section of the monster manual. Honestly, <clears throat> I'm not overly sure, but anytime I like drawing dinosaurs, my personal, uh, enjoyment of design is the ones where they have feathers. So I might be drawing feathers. We'll see. All right. I'm trying to read up on this like Allosaurus, which is like different than a lot of D&D &D things because uh, it's an actual thing. So there's a lot more writing and research done about it. 
I don't know. I'm trying to find out what's different from an Allosaurus from a Tyrannosaurus Rex. They're generally smaller, but their huh. arms aren't as stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that a lot of depictions of them have like little ridges above their eyebrows. Yeah, they um, got a little crown. <clears throat> but <laughs> mm -hmm. they have intense brow thingies. Oh, interesting. Do, 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 do. How did you go with yours? Well, I'm what about to get to that. Cars. I just so have I'm... to open up another window, though. So okay. let me slowly do that, because if I... If only the other scene worked, then I wouldn't have to do that. This would all be pre-set up. But no. Audio is not allowed to happen on the other thing. Oh. Um, okay, so I'll do this. I'll do a display. Add source. I'll say yes. And it will be that one. Yes. Done. Good. Make sure there's no secrets or spoilers on my desktop. Bop, 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 bop. Nope. Looks like everything's okay. Except for this. I should hide this because that's not going to be relevant until um, a little later in the month. Any other spoilers? Okay, good. Um, all right, so the idea that I went with is Z's. Oh, no. Oh, I have to set that up again. <laughs> I forgot that I'm not on the... Oh, I set all that up. I spent so much time setting up all the visuals on the other thing. It's so sad that the <laughs> audio won't work. And I have to keep constantly reminding myself that I'm not there anymore. I have to do this other thing. All right, fine. Media share asset. Add source. Browse. Find the thing that's on my desktop. So let's do this one, because this is what I've been working on for the past week, and I finally figured it out, and I only have to add one more thing to it, which is the human layer. So there's that, but that's not what I'm talking about just yet. Hold up, one more minute. This is what happens when Tyler experiences technical difficulties. Everything has to kind of be reset two steps. So then he has to like try to sprint as fast as his slow knobbly knees can take him for three more steps to try to catch up um hopefully this will give even some ample time to think of a strategy an approach for this i'm gonna be so happy once i get all these things in because then that means that i can possibly get started on the El Mirage unless i get made fun of for what i have media share two okay and then this is what i actually produced in the few hours that i woke up and tried to prepare everything <sighs> desktop Or did I put it on the desktop? Ah, criminy. Where did I put it? <laughs> Dig nibbit. So one thing that I did want to um, kind of talk about while I do this is what... Um, one of the things that I've been kind of always disappointed about whenever I play D&D, a druid in particular, is um, the lack of use of dinosaurs, you know? And, like, I get it that, like, explicit history books don't exactly exist in the, like, time era that usually D&D settings are depicted, but 
you know, there has to be some sort of semblance of an archaeologist or something like that, you know? And it's just, you know, it's always disappointing when you sit there and you go, so DM, have I done any sort of research or anything, you know, like some sort of loophole as to, like, can I access this section of the D&D monster manual? Because I think dinosaurs are criminally underused in dungeons and mm -hmm. dungeons. I think in uh, <clears throat> fourth edition, I want to say they did a cool thing of recategorizing like the, the 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 umbrella term of dinosaurs, where they just called them behemoths, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was like an interesting and strange idea. Uh, because like you had to take a moment to like behemoths. What are behemoths? And you're like reading through them like that's just a stegosaurus. And I was like a little disappointing, but at the same time, it reframed this idea of like culturally, like the concept of dinosaurs wasn't made. And this was like behemoths was more like, I don't know, they're just huge, awkward and ancient and strange as opposed to like the fire creatures thing. All right, ready? So this but is what I got. Again, it was under you. <laughs> uh, maybe I should. I'm just gonna double check one thing real quick. Make sure it does loop. Make this big so I can watch. Beginning. Restart play source. Okay, cool. That works. Okay, so, hiya. I actually have to transition again. Yay! <laughs> Chasing a little car. <laughs> um, but that's not all. I can find my. So, yeah, basically, I just looked around to try to find a, an Allosaurus depiction, and then I smashed it up into three different pieces. I was considering a fourth, but I said, hey, I can cheat it out a little bit by just moving him off screen a little bit. And I already had this car on a road asset for something that I'm going to show off later. And I was like, all right, and then I can make him chase him. Um, so, yeah. And yes, I, I if... hate like pixelated white bits around the edges but yeah well besides that as like a quick like uh like if this were an animatic i'd be pretty happy with it <laughs> get the idea so yeah basically if you want to recreate this just get yourself an allosaurus picture somewhere on the onlines and then if you want to make it move you know i mean you could easily just put this thing you can easily just put this thing in and, you know, just make it, you know, just kind of hit the rotation button and just make it, you know, just make it go rah, rah, rah. Um, but that's boring. Like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to just take this thing and just, like, make the whole body roar? That's, that's not cool. That's not realistic. So instead, you take this body and you smash it up into different pieces. So you got the body piece. You got the head piece. Got the leg piece. Well, not that leg piece. This leg piece. Because I decided that I was going to be lazy. I was going to lop it off at the like hip bone area. But you still got to have a leg piece so that there's a little more effort put into it, you know, because we're already cutting corners. So we got to make up for that somehow, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then once you've got that, come into come to the program that you're eventually going to. Uh, you're going to use it all in all going to culminate in you have your you have your asset so if you don't have something like this and you got to have a foreground thing right so you can either have a little a little person or in this case i got a car because i've already got the i've already got the car and the road asset and then all you have to do is come up here got to go to add got to go to image images as planes because otherwise it's just a background thing and it won't exactly show up at, like really good in the render and I don't remember if this comes default. You might have to download a add-on to actually make that appear. But once you do, oh man, you're on you're on the easy street for really cool, really cool effects. And all you gotta do is add in your 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 assets. So um 
one of the things that you add in is the head, for example. It's all the way back there. Once you add in a once you add in a thing, you can't just leave it there because uh, that's not that's not how it works. You know, you gotta do a thing. I'm just gonna hit a hit another image just for just for haha's. -ha so now we're gonna be at the beach. Um, can't just leave it like that because it just sits off to the side of the screen. That doesn't work very well. So what I've been taught to do is to select both these things, camera last, control P to parent the thing as an object, and then control C to do some copying. So then you got to copy the location. So now the, so now the asset copies the camera's location and you got to copy the rotation. So that it matches the same, um, so everything basically lines up. Uh, my program's chugging now. Uh, click off of it. Go into edit mode. Let's grab this thing and let's kind of move it into position. So gotta hit that G and then that Z twice, not once, twice. And then we move it in here so that it's in front and in frame, relatively. I'm being lazy on that part right now. And then all you have to do from there to get it where you want, because right now, what's supposed to be the background is actually just, you know, taking up everything. It's all in the, for in the foreground. So you just hit that S to scale it. And it stays in frame, but it's actually moving back where it's supposed to exist. Keep it going hmm. until we see the Allosaurus. Uh-oh. We might have a scale issue here. Well, whatever. So, but that's basically the process of how you get your image, oops, how you get your image as a plane to align with the camera and then scale backwards. So I'm gonna actually get rid of this thing right now because now that we know the process of how I got my Allosaurus head, my Allosaurus body, and my Allosaurus leg in position. So down here, this is my camera view. This is what actually gets rendered the location because everything up here in my workspace is chaos and is moving very slowly right now, and I don't want to mess with it. Um, so now I have these three different pieces. It's like, all right, well, I mean, they're all in the same position. So why didn't you just leave everything the way it was? Well, stupid, um, you got to move the head because it's like bird, it's, it's uh, bird properties, right? So the head's going to be like locked onto its target. It's not really going to move that much, right? It's going to be on that weird avian gimbal. The body, however, is going to be all over the place because the legs are big and unwieldy. So there's going to obviously be some bouncing and some motion there. Um, so you take the so you take the body, right? But this thing's like, you know, it, it's a rel it's a relatively graceful hunter. So the body's not going to be like bouncing all over the place. So I, you know, you just add a little tiny bit of rotation to it, and then you add a, you know. You add kind of a, a like an uprise because that other leg's coming down and it's contacting with the ground, but it's not fully you know extended yet, so it's got to lift itself up a little bit and then it's got to come down with the other leg. Um, but the head, I didn't move the head at all except for its elevation point because again that thing's like you know it's fixated, it's it's in there. And then the leg was probably the most annoying thing to just kind of animate because not only does it do this kind of circular sort of location change, but it's also got to rotate a little bit because it's a foot. You know, it doesn't just, you don't just have this L, you know, this L shape and then that L shape's just moving in a circle. That's not how walking works. Um, if we've learned anything from Evan's animation last week, you know, there's a lot more motion that goes into an ankle and all this other stuff. But I didn't want to, I could. So if I if I cared more <laughs> about the animation of the leg, I could have split the um, Allosaurus leg into two other parts. So it'd be the foot and then the leg and the, the leg proper so that there could be more rotation. There could be more movement. 
but again, I was happy enough with the base value of what I had. <laughs> um, yeah, and so if I zoom out a little bit in the camera view, you can see in the shaded area that doesn't get rendered in in our camera that the leg is just kind of chilling out over here. <laughs> And because that's what happens, you know, if it's off, if it's off stage, it doesn't matter how messy it is um, as long. But once you're on stage, you know, it better be better be uh, on point relatively. So it goes rawr and then boom. And then it's just chasing after this car. Um, and then you'll notice that there's kind of this checker sort of thing. So anyone who's edited video or put a alpha channel in the back of their painting or whatever they're they're drawing in adobe or gimp or whatever you use that means that it's see-through if we put it somewhere else depending on how we you know export it slash render it out so what does that mean that means that if i come over if i if i reactivate my media share you know we reactivate this thing and then i add another camera if it'll let me I wish I had a technician so that while I was explaining how I chopped the Allosaurus up, then they could have been adding this camera in, and then everything would be <laughs> a lot smoother. But unfortunately, you know, this is how one man shows work when you have the f first 20 minutes of the thing being technical difficulties. <laughs> so, what you're saying is if there's anybody out there watching that wants to be his cameraman, it's got to be open. You know, technically, I could also give you access to the Streamlabs OBS so that where you're sitting now, you could remotely kind of mess with my OBS. But with that oh, being said, good. you're already running a lot of stuff that your character doesn't like, and Streamlabs kind of requires a lot of effort from your from a computer. Sure it does. So that's why I haven't exactly made a point to ask that ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. See, if on the other on the, in the other area, I could move all these assets around, and my computer doesn't make any sort of complaints whatsoever. But now that I'm adding all these things in to try to, you know, show off what I've been, you know, what I've been working so hard on for the past two hours, um, or at least in theory, it wasn't exactly hard work. It was mo mostly a lot of, like, theorizing and research of, like, can I do this? Is this a thing that's possible with my computer? Oh, no, my camera went away. All right, here we go. So then I move it down. All right, so uh, while I fix this camera, can come back to what I'm doing a little later. So let's uh, focus on what you're doing. So you're doing a jumping thing? Yeah, action shot sort of something. Uh, and this thing is like pretty huge. It's only off, like, when I was reading, uh, smaller sometimes than the Tyrannosaurus Rex by like eh, marginal uh like lengths wise like it's only like a, a couple meters off um but like weight wise it is a lot lighter um or so uh the things that i was reading was telling me so i like the idea of it moving really quick and uh slightly more like a giant velociraptor kind of thing even if not, I think everybody enjoys movement <laughs> less or more than less than the less movement kind of designs. So that's what I'm trying. So I understand dino anatomy, not so much. So we're going to see what actually comes of this. I don't know. I'm thinking so is... that maybe I can go a little bit on the easier side if I uh, draw it jumping and doing something. Uh, and then I can put something down here in the lower right-hand corner for it to jump on. Um, possibly the next couple creatures that we're going to try to breeze past. 
So this is the uh, this is the this is the apex of my of my creation my creational view. <laughs> That's a strange idea of like, yeah, I'm so done with life. I'm gonna let like Jesus take the wheel. So drive. <laughs> I got it. If I'm gonna get eaten by this thing, so be it, God. Have me crash into something. Yeah, I could have like um he's just angry and so he just wants some coffee. Just like Come on. <laughs> a little further. Come on. <laughs> See, look at all the fun. For just two hours of work, look at all the fun you can have with, with a green screen <laughs> and some scaling issues. <laughs> and some scaling issues. <laughs> uh, so anyways. But look at how much like it it's still it's there's still some jank but look at all the look at all the look at how much better the movement looks for this allosaurus than just having a you know a static what you call it body static what you call it yeah just a static rotation body rotation all right, let's make your camera larger so that I can show that off. But first, let's get rid of this camera because it seems to be lagging my computer out. And let's get rid of the Allosaurus thing because I'm done with that. And then let's make yours. Ooh, excuse me. Let's make yours larger and let's see what you're doing over there. Bam! That was interesting. You were talking about like um, the druid and the druid shape change ability and how it does kind of, I don't know. It's frustrating knowing that there's dinosaurs as a possibility, but will you be able to use them? Maybe not. And particularly something like an Allosaurus, I was like reading that they lived about um, uh, 165 million years ago, whereas the Tyrannosaurus Rex possibly lived around 65 million years ago. So 100 million year difference between these two creatures in their general existence so uh and although the um the there is like the the pyramids uh themselves uh, like uh the pyramids of giza um exist existed around the time that like um woolly mammoth were walking around and stuff that's still a very very long distances between things existing <laughs> for you to give any sense of seeing these creatures so it is kind of like frustrating in a fantasy sense trying to like add some reality to it but also knowing that at any time the dm could decide that somebody has this creature and it's going to attack you roll for initiative <laughs> and they don't i don't know i think it uh all like on the sense of druids and stuff they go to like they hardly ever or I very rarely met anyone, uh, any DM or player that goes into like trying to articulate how does one like learn to shape change, uh, learn the shapes of a particular creature. And I think that's an underused thing um, to which, I don't know, I think I would, I'd, oh, I don't know, I would like be cool with like, oh, yeah, of course I wouldn't be able to like figure out how to turn into this creature just by reading books or just by looking at him because my shape change ability is actually pretty difficult. I have to watch him for about a week and then I need to eat them uh, systematically, dissecting them in a way so I understand their anatomy. Like, yeah, that's... I think that'd be cool. It's like you have to ingest like some portion of their DNA. So it's, mm -hmm. like, so it's like, oh yeah, I can turn into a triceratops but only a triceratops it's like how how oh i uh <clears throat> chewed on a fossil <laughs> like maybe it's like a 
it was like an ancient druid rite kind of thing that you had to check in with your your master once you got like strong enough and they're like okay now you can like nibble on the sacred bones <laughs> And you're like, oh, sweet. And although it tastes disgusting and it's hard to, uh, to chew uh, down the marrow of this old thing. That would be a really cool... Um, it's war. That'd be a really cool storyline to kind of write out that this there's this druid tribe that starts off like all of all of the young of their of their tribe starts off in kind of this like base camp sort of thing and this like uh yeah base camp sort of thing that's just kind of in the center and then when they reach a certain age you know then that's kind of their like coming of age ritual is that they get to choose which branch tribe they get to go to and like w depending on which one you know they have to like take a you know take a nibble or uh some sort of thing of like that dinosaur bone and so each try so you know the druid in that case wouldn't be able to like be change into every dinosaur but they would have to choose which dine you know which you know is it the triceratops tribe is it the t-rex tribe is it the raptor tribe you know it's like they have their um their guardian you know their guardian beast i guess they are mm -hmm. considered beasts right yes and um, that's why you can transform into them because they are beasts and like definitely i think it's that would be a, a really cool there's like a lot of possibility of like why a druid that's supposed to be staying relatively in one kind of area um would go out and adventure and do things like because you're you have to go around and like collect i don't know new specimens for your your people uh maybe your bone or your bone supply has like finally disappeared or been like eaten enough like well we need to find other things because new generations are not going to have the power of these ancient powerful creatures and we have to like hunt these down or some other sect stole your your bones and you're trying to return them mm. going after indiana jones and him putting them in museums and stuff <laughs> and you're maybe a bad guy now but well, I mean that could you... that could really play to your. Um, I mean, you were it was a paladin then, but that could really play to your aesthetic in the sense of you know that's the DM allowing the players to tap in a little bit to their like you know to their more evil tendencies is that you know they could help out this druid um, by what's it called by um, I, I want to say reallocate, but that's not the word. Um, kind of recover these quote-unquote stolen you know these stolen artifacts from mm -hmm. a nearby like elven museum or something you know <laughs> like this society thinks that oh you know we're we have this museum open for you know for the preservation of stuff but in reality they're actually killing an entire culture just up the mountain a little bit which i think is pretty cool in an idea that like from an external view it was like yeah look at these like crazy like, I don't know, crazy uh, bush people that are just eating these, like, totally, or, like, mostly inedible, like, artifacts of the last, last of these creatures' kind. Like, why, why, why? Was, like, <laughs> just so they can turn into dinosaurs and enjoy destroying our stuff as it co goes through their area? Monsters. And I was like, no, uh, screw you. Who told you you can make it, uh, like, you can build on our land? I think that'd be a really cool thing is that like, um, you know, for, for a long time during this, I guess it would be a side mission or just kind of like if you were playing a, one of those more like long term, like um, custom games type things like this could be um, the druid player in your parties like this is his like month of like background, like story mission type of a thing. Um, mm -hmm. But like for the first half of like this story arc, um, you know, you can kind of sympathize with one or the other type thing but then later you know and you're like okay well i understand the the need for the museum because like they um you know they're they're there for preservation and these other guys you know they they have this they have this culture this this ritual that they also want to preserve so it's either this pre preservation of something this object or this preservation of this action but what either don't really like um kind of acknowledge or what's not really revealed 
is that there's this arch druid that's just able to like if um it's not something that happens often because you know who wants who wants to permanently be removed from their society but if someone chooses to they can go to this arch druid who knows true polymorph and just turn them into a you know a dinosaur for I, I think it was an hour or something and then it's permanent so it's just like you know they 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 could do that but that's it's not exactly something right. that's yeah but it's not something that's nice to do because then you know obviously the the follow-up is you get to spend maybe like um like a month or a year or so as like this living dinosaur but then the tribe's probably gonna hunt you down <laughs> or you get to live like a god until you die that's true i guess technically i think druids also have um petrification spells so I mean, there's that option, too, where it's like, all right, I mean, we can just instantly fossilize your bones whenever you expire. So, <laughs> Actually, if you rewrite that, so I, I tried to make it more more kind of this, like, Dark Sinister thing, but, the you know, it could actually be that um, the other way around in which the, you know, it's kind of this, this psych, this, this cyclical kind of, you know, changing of the guard where it's like the old one. Um, the old quote unquote guardian, you know, expires and then they have to find a new one. So they have to search their, you know, they have to search their tribe for whoever's the most worthy to become the next, you know, Lord Tyrannosaurus or Lord Triceratops <laughs> or something. And then the old one gets petrified so that the bones don't necessarily like deteriorate as fast enough. But shards of it can still be chipped off and like you know fed to the younger generation so that they can you know so that the ritual can continue um but then the museum portion of that story would have to also be tweaked because now there should be no issue if they have this kind of ritualistic way of just cycling out the you know the new for the old to maintain this ritual I mean, maybe they want the the old and they have like somebody stole the old, the new one exists, but you're stuck with this now decision. Like, do you eat the new person that is a dinosaur? Oh, yeah, it could be a speed. So instead of OK, so that could be that could be a, a thing. So instead of it being this like so we know that these dinosaurs live for like 102 years, you know, um, we have some time for a few generations to go by before we have to actually do the you know the the changing ceremony but now that these museums in here and they don't know that we have these living representatives they think that they're doing a good thing by trying to quote unquote preserve history um by stealing these you know by stealing these things from the earth in which we laid them in in our quote unquote graveyard we now have to rep more rapidly do this thing so that we have our resources and it's like literally killing our tribe, you know, so finally we're fed up with it. You know, we don't, you know, this isn't right. So we're going to start attacking the museum. And now you've got these, you know, quote unquote, eco terrorists coming in. And then the players can find out that, oh, they're not eco terrorists. They're actually trying to stop their, <laughs> they're trying to stop their tribe from being preserved into ex extinction <laughs> mm -hmm. um i had another concept oh the other con the other way that you can write it too is it just you know switch out um switch out the museum for a zoo you know it's like whoa dinosaurs exist we thought they were we thought they were all you know dead or they're in a underground cave somewhere in the underdark we didn't know that let's friggin cage them up and sell admission tickets but in reality they're actually just you know these druids that volunteered for this ritual <laughs> so it's like all right so now what are we gonna do <laughs> are we going to just destroy this zoo or are we going to try to educate them so they can work together or are we going to join in with the zoo and basically trap all of these druids into society as a sideshow act 
See, there's a lot of different things that you can do with dinosaurs, and yet they're still criminally underused. Like, um, especially in the written, in, in the written um, adventures and stuff. It's like, yeah, I mean, they show up maybe like once in some of the earlier ones, but as like side quest stuff that aren't really all that um, desirable. Like when it's introduced, when the option is introduced to the players, it's like, yeah we could go and chase down the circus but i mean there's a demigod that's trying to you know turn the entire world to ice so <laughs> let me see priorities right um though no, i don't know it's also part of what even in the way that you were describing like this druid sect and them using having dinosaurs or ending up in museums or into um Zoos. into uh, zoos uh, you were kind of talking about them as if they were own, uh, these ancient things that nobody's seen but they could just be like I don't know like it, it depends on the setting that you choose and that they could be just they're old uh, they're they do reference another time but it's not so so different and I think an there could be this like a kind of colonialist like over poaching and putting into menageries and um, taxiderming these creatures that though although they're commonplace and people commonly use them there's a misconception of like how readily available they are because they're just rare in a lot of other places but not rare in others uh, because like uh, if we take the Forgotten Realm setting there is like like the whole, like the pencil of Chult has like dinosaurs, dinosaurs, dinosaurs. Everybody just uses them as regular pack mules and food and stuff. And that means much of the rest of that uh, continent must have access to those dinosaurs as well. Right. So um, let's so let's take a look at the Chult and the Tomb of Annihilation, for example. So yes, they do exist and they're around, you know, but. I would argue that they're still criminally underused because it's like in the, in the very beginning, you know, all the descriptions are like, whoa, dinosaur, look at this thing. You know, it's got all these saddles on and it's friggin' Dinotopia up in, up in this bitch. Um, but then that's it. You know, you, you start to adventure into the jungle and then the only other sort of interaction with dinosaurs that you get is as zombies and they're like hunting you down for some reason or you you encounter them every once in a while and that's about it, right? And it's like there's no, you know, the, and even even if you wanted to hire one out as like a pack mule or something, it's like really expensive, and the game doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it almost doesn't allow the players to like play with the dinosaurs from an early onset. You know, it's like mm. sure buying one could be really expensive, but renting it out should be like. Like what, fifty gold? Like that's fifty gold is like a lot for like a poor person in the in those worlds. But like, it shouldn't be that bad for an adventuring group, especially an adventuring group that's being hired by an extremely wealthy person for reasons of you know I don't want to die. <laughs> um, but anyways, like like that that adventure could have at least been written in so that there could be like a tribe out there, you know, a hunter in the city or something that uses like a pack of smaller dinosaurs or something, you know, as like a, as like a rar and you, you either piss him off and he's like an antagonist to you, or you can hire him out and make something in that world a lot easier because of his help and his little pack minions. Um, I guess I am forgetting about the King of Feathers, which is technically a Tyrannosaurus. But, mm -hmm. again... And this might just be the way that my DM ran it, but um, still relatively criminally underused. Like, there could have been this whole thing of, like, you know, there's, there's this big dude, and he's, like, he takes, like, no damage from you guys. So now you have to do this kind of, like, stealth. Like, you can, like, throw it, you know, you can, like, shoot a... a a bolt like an arrow bolt into his thigh to like make him like turn around and run one direction and then you guys kind of sneak around the barrel and move in the opposite direction to kind of get around him or something but when you when you meet him it's it's fairly late into the storyline and so you guys you know so the party's maybe like level eight 
maybe level 10 like we're level 10 now and we killed that guy like months ago um but anyways level eight you know it's relatively he's, he's relatively a pushover like maybe one of your party of four might get downed but it's not like oh no we can't you know revive slash just heal you back alive in like you know two turns mm -hmm. um yeah i'm just it's just whenever whenever i flip into that like into that section of the D, &D monster manual it's like oh like all these things are so cool but man <laughs> i guess it also is really hard to use them because they do thematically not work with a lot of things like if you're in the if you're in the demon world like yeah you could write it in that there might be like a t-rex or something like with a iron chain collar on there or something but you know it's like all right that's cool look at this demon that's trying to you know get our soul or or something um, right that they like i think they do a poor job of trying to make make readily available versions of these dinosaurs they like i think that's a, a big issue that D, D has in general is their their cr system which makes it uh, like admittedly it makes it easier for you to build encounters and stuff and to like have like a theme of creatures that you fight at a certain level that's kind of cool but at the same time that if uh, inexperienced people uh dms uh don't know how to alter the CRs so that they can be changed, so that you can en enjoy it at different levels. Like a, um, and like like you were saying, like sure, you it, it costs a whole lot to rent a triceratops, but I don't know. There are a lot of other dinosaurs that aren't that dangerous and that are pretty small that you could possibly get and have, but they're not written into the dun uh the monster manual because they are small non-combatant kind of things they're like cows and <laughs> they only mention they put in that one like i i don't know i think there's an abyssal cow and auroch in there in one of the books just for funsies but they don't really do anything besides that thing smells bad <laughs> and that it creates uh the fact that it smells so bad it creates that an effect uh that could be uh dealt with so yeah i think i think people need to change it like uh if you look at like eberron is another one that's really cool uh it's a neat system or a neat world D, D where halflings like own a very big area of like planes and they're nomadic and they move around hunting and living with and on dinosaurs it's pretty cool um but like the dinosaurs that they use, like, you have to actually look through the monster. Uh, like, uh, one of their most common things is a, a fasty. And the fasty dinosaur is pretty much, it's a horse. It's not a horse, but it's their, like, it's their, their common thing that they ride, that they hunt, that they, uh, that they herd. Uh, and they, there's lots of other dinosaurs that are there too, but those aren't the common ones. But they don't even really put a the fast teeth like in the monster manual because really a smart dm knows how to make some changes to be like okay this is the equivalent of horse if you want a fast teeth i will like and if they're smart they won't just say it's just a horse they'll make a couple changes and be like okay yeah sure here's a here's you have a fast teeth it's five gold I'm like what that's a steal but that's because they're just everywhere man but also even my dm I was running it like they were so perplexed at like um the uh the the fact that the, the halflings have dinosaurs but they kind of like missed a subtext that like dinosaurs aren't they're just because the the halfling planes are super open like and that the halflings prefer keeping them alive and living and hurting them that they're more prevalent there but dinosaurs exist in other places. They're just rare because people have hunted them down, like how wolves are rare in a lot of places, but just because we've killed them. But there's a lot of other places where 
that's so overgrown, uh, like on different continents and uh, even in some of the jungle areas in the like the main continent that you play on in Eberron that I don't think my DM noticed that like dinosaurs exist there pretty commonly and that you should just have them and people shouldn't be so surprised but surprised enough like if I saw a tiger in real life I'd be pretty surprised it'd be awesome yeah like I think that's one of the um, that's one of the questions that I always ask when I get to I forget what level it is for a druid but like when all you know when their 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 shape shift ability when it widens like for that first time and suddenly you have you know all these other things there's a lot of dinosaurs that are also in that in that category and so that's one of the first things i'm just like uh question in in my past have i ever researched or seen you know this dinosaur this dinosaur this dinosaur and it's like well no and it's like oh man <laughs> yeah and i think it's it's a lack of creativity and understanding on the dm side of how these dinosaurs existed and what like um like uh ecological niche they per they would serve in their environment because they very well did and could just act as like those those same things that we're used to seeing like uh of like cows and deers and um uh and lions and tigers like the fact that so many people get away with the murderous use of the giant ape or giant eagle who the hell ever saw a giant eagle like <laughs> if we really want to talk about it like why is that so much more believable or a dire wolf why is that more believable than than a velociraptor like it would a dire wolf velociraptor hunts and packs really big charges a thing down and eats it viciously yeah, the one thing, one relatively, the one option that I accept the most is do a history check, <laughs> and it's like, all right, I mean that basically means no, but if I roll high enough, then you'll accept it. So, that's that's at least a willingness to leave it up to chance. But like when the answer is just flat out no, it's like, oh man, like why? Yeah. <laughs> um. But that falls under right. my I think, criticism of critically or of, uh, criminally underused. <laughs> so, yeah, and I think again, like it's part of the DM's fault for not going. Okay, if you want dinosaurs to exist, how do you know about dinosaurs? Where do they exist? Is there like a secret grove? Did like, is there? Are they commonplace? If they're commonplace, that gives me some possibilities of things that I can use. Like, I've been wanting to have. Uh, like a knightly order of like like uh, mounted paladins but i just didn't know like now i can make it really cool or the fact that they all ride dinosaurs because you said dinosaurs are common like <laughs> or that if they are like a niche sort of thing and there's a special place like ooh, now i have a quest that we can do i definitely like making my claws too long but screw it Well, I think when you're yeah. this zoomed out, it's hard to, like, do mass detail on a claw. Like, unless if it's a raptor, like, claws are generally pretty small and overlooked. <laughs> as long as there's something sharp protruding out of a finger-like nub. <laughs> Yeah, our our claws even like can do some amount of damage, and you like hardly even notice those. Do, do, get, do, do, do. I need to get a silhouette from you or something. Silhouette of I've, me. Oh, I've got this. Uh, okay. I've, I've, I'm I'm slowly building up this library of like different people silhouettes that I have on the show and stuff, and. I'm just going to slowly build up like a theater, <laughs> just a theater of different people. But I need to figure out how to do it. Like, because I hate, I've tried with like this a static thing and it works, but I know. And so it, it bothers me. So I need to try to find a way to like acquire different, um, 
like if people just like move a little bit <laughs> like what i'm doing now mm. <laughs> i guess uh it's a, a kind of a silly thing but if you i don't know how easy it is to have it in there but if you recorded a cycle of a person and they and you put that because it would be the same as a cycle that you would secretly know yeah. and that others could catch on to but if they wanted yeah I but think it was like I, to, I think what i need to do is i just need to like um, direct people and just be like all right so what i need from you is like some kind of a contrasting background so that I can like color correct it so that it the silhouette works. But then I need you to like move three times for like a count of three and then just stay still for like a count of four and then move again for a count of three. Mm. <laughs> you know, so there is that like that um that chop, you know, that that change up so that there is that like there is a pattern, but it's kinda like the it's a kinda like wallpaper, you know, it's like there is a pattern, but it's you know, it takes you a while to where the repeat actually happens. Yeah. Speaking Sad, of repeats, I realized the other day. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so I was just going to be like, speaking of repeats, so this is the first pass of the animation I've been working on for like a half. Hmm. And the car thing? I just need... The last thing that I need to add to that is the live action version or the live action asset, which is basically me green screened or whoever else is going to be in that particular session with me green screened and just messing around within that vehicle. Mm. I think the, uh, the portal that comes up comes up a little bit too quickly. I want to say, yeah, it's, and I know, I know it feels jarring, um, in the way that it does, but maybe, I don't know it, how, if you could change the timing so that it's like slow at the beginning, fast as it passes the car and then slows as it shrinks down. And then I would, if you could, uh, alter the edge a little bit more so that it, um, is, was more obviously like a distortion between one existence and another. I could oh, try that's a regular but that is pretty hard. The um no, the, thing, I get the you. thing the thing that I get really kind of pissed off about in is I don't have a full grasp of how the perspective view camera works. So that's kind of the reason why the portal like suddenly pops up is because where it is in relation to where the camera is, um and I don't really want to move where the camera is, uh, just because I have it. It's it's at a good distance between where the car is and where the road kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. um, but where the where the portal ends up being here, I can actually show some stuff, um, which I'd be able to instantly just click off of if the other freaking thing would work. Urgh. Okay, so I'll move you down. Uh, too small. Oh. Um, Something that you might do, and it is just like a, I don't know. It is a lot of hard questions and things that like are challenging to work with. But you might create like a, a subtle distortion that happens in that camera area before it comes to signify to us that like something is going to come. Like so, if it like warps, I don't know, in a part of the screen before the the actual wave comes, that might help. But again, those are those are that those parts where it's you. I don't know. It's not so much about like the program showing it in the way that you want it. Um, 
uh, you actually having to hand go in there and make it work. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, again, that's what I don't really understand about the perspective, the per like the. you know, this rectangle, basically, that the camera moves down, you know, down through the middle of it. But in the camera perspective, you know, the, the end of the rectangle box could be, you know, 16 units down. But because of the perspective of the camera, it it zooms that up so that it's only ever like four units away, you know? So it's like, no matter how far away I put the back of the hallway, it's always four units away instead of the 16 units that I put it in the actual world. So I, I don't know. I just don't understand really <clears throat> what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> um, Strange. But now that I'm relatively done with this project, I can finally spend some time to research as to why that's a thing. I mean, awesome. Yeah, you do just you go back to when you get a chance and learn. I want to imagine that your Allosaurus is not actually leaping for hunting. It's like leaping into a summer pool party. Or like, you know, it's like at the lake or something. Like that. Like, oh yes, yeah, Steve, you think that was a big splash? Check this out. Ra <laughs> Um, yeah, so from last week, so I don't, I, I believe I told you four things that were kind of on my docket and I completed, so I, I, I got to a point in the animation where I'm pretty much happy with it. I mean, mm. there's your notes that I'm going to take to consideration much later, but I want to put in my live action portions first just to be like, all right, this is the concept that was in my head. Now I can make the car more more like a convertible, you know, more like a more like a '70s convertible looking thing instead of this weird pixel. This is my first video game type <laughs> type asset. Um, I want to put more lighting on the mine cart. Maybe remove the road and put in an actual like rail system for that thing. Um, try to figure out more vehicles that I can put in there, and actually while um while you were while you were describing um i forget where we were in the in the describing process but i was i was considering and i was like you know what i'm going to add the allosaurus in one of those segments like just for one of those things like it's running through um you know it's running through super smash brothers you know the super smash brothers dimension or something and we're just like spontaneously <laughs> being chased by an allosaurus go through the portal and it's gone you know and we're we're in a different situation now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, the other thing that I completed was I, f I finally f uh, pinpointed a date for the Neverhood Marathon, and it's going to be the 22nd of this month. So I don't know how like extremely busy you are. It's a Saturday. But um, I'm planning to start at 10 and then just go until we finish you know we get to the end credits <laughs> um 
that sounds like a lot. But twenty second on a Saturday, that's that's not too bad. Like uh I my usual Saturday routine has been um has been put on hold. So I have a little bit of time. Cool. Yeah, I mean I like I said, it'll I just work yeah. on things. Yeah, so like I said, it'll just, you know, my goal is to start at 10 and then just go. And by nature of the just go, you know, it's just like, yeah, you know, just drop in whenever you can and then you can leave whenever you have to. Um, yeah, so. We hit our hour point about six minutes ago. So I think I'm going to play it safe and not do, not try to force the all mirage on this session. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, I wonder that, why that was weird. I if it's been like that this entire time. I really want you to put Forgot. a really smart I left some settings here. on. <laughs> so I was going with it. Let's see. <laughs> and just slowly, like, now you've got a, re a relatively well-established, like, Allosaurus. And then now you just slowly start to just ruin it by putting more and more silly things in there. Like he's jumping into a into an inner tube that's obviously too small for him. But you know what what thirteen year old hasn't tried to do that? Um, and then put little water wings on his arms <laughs> and just you know just slowly start adding silly things that just slowly ruins the entirety of the of the image, <laughs> or at least ruins the integrity of the entire image. <laughs> have you ever have you ever no. seen another artist do that where like they they have this really cool image and then they they sit back and they go yeah and then they get back up to the canvas or whatever medium they're working on and then they just slowly start adding silly things <laughs> they're just like oh man you had a cool image and now it's a comedical like you had a cool like vicious looking image and now it's just a comedic looking image <laughs> Um, honestly, don't know. I don't tend to watch too many other artists at work like that. Um, but I guess, I don't know. I'm trying to think. There's a couple, there's an artist that I do watch that, uh, which I forget his name at the moment, but they, they like drawing dinosaur is people um but uh and they draw very realistic kind of people lots of muscles really intense mm -hmm. um really amazing anatomy overall but sometimes they do like doing silly things that like where it's this like really i don't know essentially some buff guy going to <laughs> to the beach wearing water wings so it's weird watching them uh just build this awesome anatomy um because they like to build, uh, they like to start it that way, and then after they have a lot of that stuff, they start putting on these clothes and really ridiculous expressions and things of that nature. So I guess I've seen it, but you already kind of knew-ish where they were going, and, that, and there wasn't that pretext of like, oh, I'm going to do, or I was expecting <laughs> completely <laughs> serious work. Yeah, I think to amend my my previous question, it's not so much like they 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 sit at the you know they sit at their workstation and they create this really serious, really cool, really vicious kind of image, and then they mess it up. Like it's obviously on purpose that they would have this you know this initial image stand back from it and go, yeah, that's that's right, and then they get back to it, and then they on purpose, mind you, just make it sillier and sillier. <laughs> so, cause I don't think any artist would ever sit back and look at something that's like cool or, you know, realistic. And then they go, all right, 
now I got to do more and then they just make it more and more cartoony. Like, I don't think that's ever a, you know, but on accident, I don't ever think that's a thing. Cause it's like, why, how could you, how could your midpoint be something so serious, so detailed? And then by putting more detail, it gets cartoonier and more childish, you know, like that doesn't, that doesn't fully make sense to my head. <laughs> I don't know. I have not seen so much. I did watch one that was pretty cool of somebody. Um, they were reverse uh, beauty editing uh, a model and showing like what this model looked like before they did all their beauty edits uh, and made it look made it look pretty. So making the person like back to a normal person body size. Uh, at putting back the blemishes and stuff but but uh but they did like a, there was like a couple pauses i'm like and then they, they did this thing and then they would reverse uh the thing and then you would uh, change this thing but it even gets worse and they kept on going and going going and through the video it so slowly turned into santa claus <laughs> but then through that video it slowly turned into a piece of pizza oh, like no. <laughs> so that that's probably the closest that I've seen, but I would not say that that was like a usual thing that I was ever watching. Mm. <laughs> but that was a pretty that was a pretty good one of like wow, like uh, whoever that photo editor is really really quite amazing that they could so easily change uh, change a person into pizza. <laughs> oh. Programs getting like fuzzy ish, or it's like not registering where where I'm making markings, or at least not doing it very quickly. Oh well. Do -do -do. All right. Well, just let me know when you. So, what is the creature that you want to do next time? Um, the. My initial response is the Al Mirage, but I'm really kind of unenchanted by the fact that it's just a rabbit that you stick a horn on. Like I don't know if it has any other sort of mythical dooley bops. Well, I think something that's very strange and interesting about the Al Mirage is that more than just being a rabbit with a horn, um, its fur coat is awful different um but also it is categorized as a small creature and not a tiny creature so small being about the size of a uh of like a halfling so a child like a full grow like uh i don't know oh, let's see so like a, if you think like a yeah like elementary school kid <laughs> like that's a really big bunny so i think thinking about where it exists also, something that's kind of neat in at least the description on um, the the monster manual or the, the monster appendix in the uh, Tomb of Annihilation um, is the fact that you can, that can be a, a, a familiar if you wanted it to be, which is a really large familiar. <laughs> like, I don't think there's any other familiars that big. I think that was like a weird, like, Maybe you shouldn't have said that. Well, but I, think... I kind of like the idea of like this all mirage running and stabbing someone with their little horn and casting like the touch spell as the uh, as that's uh, the fine familiar spell allows familiars to do. Yeah, I think of the small creature or the small beasts that exist in D and D. I think the all mirage does the least because it doesn't really do probably much its melee attack weapon is a plus five hit so that's pretty good but the damage is only like you know it's only five average 1d4 plus three maximum um yeah i mean i pretty guess lame. i guess i could practice my my fur texturing <laughs> i guess that's the thing that i could do i, I don't know um <laughs> I don't know if like why your thing why your thing doesn't, but um, in that uh, booklet, the 
before even the Allosaurus, I want to say. No, maybe not because there's two L's. But um, no, yeah, it would be Allosaurus uh, after. But the Eldani is a creature. Does that not show up in your version of the Mas Monster Manual? Let me see. Let me find out. Oh, now you want to pop up. Hold on, I'm getting a bunch of things pop up because my OBS is chugging. <laughs> I'm making it do too much. <laughs> Um, cause when we wrap up, I want to show what you're doing and I want to show what I'm doing or I want to re-show what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Boop. Um, A, B, C, D, but not for adults because that's cheating. I'm sorry, what was the other thing you said? It was the... Aldani? Aldani. All right. There's probably a re... If it is there, there's probably a reason, and I'll give it when I see it. I mean, it would be mixed up in the whole adult section. <laughs> oh. Just before it, I want to say. Come on, I'm not asking my computer to do a bunch of different stuff. Save this GIMP project as Allo Leg. Or Allo Chop Up. How about that? Allo Chop Up. The other thing I was considering before I started my, my Allosaurus project was um, how could I portray the pun an allosaurus so like a dinosaur made of aloe plant <clears throat> but i was like i could e i could probably easily do that in a drawing program but <laughs> i think i want to try this thing first to see if it works out and it ended up working out a lot better than i thought it was going to um burp, burp, burp. <laughs> Um, guide to wild mount, guide to wild mount. That's a person. Dragon heist. Uh, elementals. Albino. Oh, the Aldani. Lobster folk. Probably because I got thrown off by the lobster folk. <laughs> Off how? Oh, because I think, I, I, think I looked it? at I think I looked at that and I was like, in so it's like a subsection of lobster folk. So I was like, all right, maybe we'll maybe, yeah. hold off we on could that till that L. <laughs> That's weird. That's I don't think I've seen that very often where it has it in parentheses where it's like because i think in that parentheses it's not it's not like this is a subsection of this that's an that's an also known as parentheses mm. so i think you're correct we could have done the aldani before the alakith and the alip and the allosaurus but i was thrown off by lobster folk <laughs> <laughs> So. Again, it's your show, mate. I really, I don't care. We can do whichever ones draw your fancy, because I don't know when you'll ever have a reason to want an Aldani in your campaigns or things. And like, even in like the uh, what would you call the the. I'm so bad at drawing and talking, but the uh, that module, uh, the Tomb of Annihilation, they like they just say they hide from people, <laughs> like they are super shy, uh, little weenies, and there's nothing important that they have for you in this quest. <laughs> that if you really want to hunt them down, you can. They exist, but they're gonna try to hide and run from you. <laughs> are they helpful? No. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. 
Oh, did it not change? Are you kidding me right now? No. <laughs> Oh, I was like, holy crap, did you animate your logo <laughs> or your your Instagram handle? <laughs> Not this time. Oh, no. I thought I changed the asset, but it didn't change. Oh, well, I'll just leave it like that then. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, rawr. Oh, my back. Uh, all right. So... Um, any other details you want to add? Not uh, really. I think we're good. <laughs> he looks so surprised. He's like that. That inner tube looks so much, so much larger further away. <laughs> no, never mind. I see the eyeball now, or I see the eyeball better. Is <laughs> the <like>, yay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it. Um, I wish I can change my media thing so I can re-show what I was doing, but OBS doesn't want to let me change my assets, so I'm just going to leave it there. Alrighty. So that about does it for this portion of some sort of talk show featuring the Allosaurus. Um, Next week, I don't really want to do the lobster people, so we're just going to um, no absentmindedly skip over that and go to the Al Mirage. Um, and I'll see how fluffy I can make a bunny and if I can possibly make a size comparison also. Um, if anybody watching this retrospectively... Uh, can come up with another Allosaurus, either doing something vicious or doing something cute and silly, um, feel free to send it to EvenStarLong on Instagram or to Foxstar underscore on Twitter, and we'll showcase it if we get any submissions. So uh, tune next time, uh, next Sunday, maybe. I don't know, because next week is the 22nd. So we're doing the Neverhood marathon where i sit down with a couple of other people and we just run through an old windows 95 game called the neverhood um and then that sunday where we theoretically should do the el mirage is the 23rd so i don't know how awake i'll be <laughs> but that game mm -hmm. shouldn't take that long so i don't know we'll see um i'll update on the 22nd <laughs> Just find out if we're doing it or not, but mentally prepare that we are. Um, with that, uh, any last words, even? Everybody out there that play, uh, that runs D and D, figure out how to make beasts just work in your world best for your characters. <laughs> Yeah, like you don't have to force feed dinosaurs into your storyline, but at least make them relatively accessible if the opportunity comes up. Um, <laughs> all right. And with that, uh, thank you for tuning in and see you next week. Bye. Bye. Uh...